All right, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into routing and express. Specifically, we're going to take a look at route parameters. Okay, so so far we have two routes. We have one route for a get request. Okay, the user would call slash groceries and they would get back a grocery list. And then if they want to call slash groceries, but with a post request, it's going to go ahead and create a new grocery item and we save it into the grocery list and we send back a response status of 201. Now, let's say, for example, we wanted to create an endpoint that specifically allows us to retrieve a value or some kind of record from the database. But we can also tell that endpoint how we want to search for that value. So let's say, for example, I want to go ahead and get this uh, this object, right? This uh, this object, this grocery item, uh, this item milk with a quantity of two. Let's say I want to get this specific object right over here. How would I actually get this individual item? Because right now we are returning the whole array. But what if I just want to get one single item? Let's just pretend that this grocery list is a database. Okay. How do I get this single item? Well, you might say, oh, can't we just, you know, do something like grocery list, subscript, zero, and then send it back like that? And if I were to do that, now you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but obviously that wouldn't be a realistic scenario because this endpoint is specifically used to return this whole array, right? What we want to do instead is we want to have both this endpoint as well as another endpoint that is specifically targeted to searching uh, based off of some kind of value. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and use what's called a route parameter. So what exactly is a route parameter? So route parameters in general capture the value that are specified at a certain position in the URL. So you've probably seen this many times before in the address bar, but you've never really noticed it. So let's say, for example, if you wanted to uh, visit an endpoint, let's just go ahead and do localhost 3001, for example, right? Let's say, for example, you wanted to visit an endpoint that gives you back a list of books. So you'll probably call this endpoint right over here books. Okay, so that's uh, this this part over here is, is, is an example of part of the URL. Okay, the part of the route. But what if we wanted to get a book based off of its ISBN? which if you don't know what that is, it's the uh, it's like basically every book has its own uh, standard book number, okay? It's called an ISBN. So let's say, for example, if you want to search for a book based off of that number, well, we can go ahead and provide that number in the route parameter. So it would look something like this. Let's just put a random number. Let's just do something like 424, 566, something like this, right? This, let's just pretend this is some ISBN for a book. Okay, so whenever we call this endpoint, localhost port 3000 slash books slash, uh, and then whatever this number is, it could be any any number, right? This is going to give us back a single record, which is a book, okay? If it's found, if it's not found, it's, it's obviously not going to return that instance, and we'll have to uh, send a 404 back to the client, okay? But this is an example of a route parameter, okay? Other examples that I can provide to you. Let's just say, for example, we want to go ahead and search for a user. So let's define a route called users. And then we want to search based off of their username. Okay. So assuming that the username can only have uh, alphanumeric characters, um, we would probably do something like, you know, let's say the username is Peter Pan, for example, right? So this would be an example of a route parameter. The route parameter in this case is the username and the value that we are substituting uh, for this position is Peter Pan. So hopefully that makes sense. So let me go ahead and remove this. Now let's go up over here and let's go ahead and extend our groceries endpoint. And what we'll do is we'll set up another get request, another get route. And we're going to go ahead and prefix it with groceries. So we'll reuse the same endpoint, the same uh, prefix endpoint. But this time we're going to go ahead and allow us, allow the users to add a route parameter at the end 
or not a route parameter, but they're, they're going to be able to add a value for the route parameter. So in order for us to actually uh, register this endpoint to pick up route parameters, we need to go ahead and first we have to add a slash. So after groceries slash and then colon. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a name for the route parameter. You can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it item because what we're going to do is we're going to search our array based off of the item name. Okay. So slash groceries slash and then you have to make sure that for every single route parameter, you prefix it with uh, a colon. So colon item. Okay. If you want to call it something else like item name or item quantity, whatever you want, call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and pass in the request handler function. Okay. Now, how do we actually get the value that the user is going to pass in for this, uh, for this item route parameter? Well, if we actually reference request.params, this is actually where every single route parameter is going to be stored. It's going to be stored inside an object as a key value pair. Okay, and you can see that IntelliSense actually picks up on the item route parameter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just console log this just to show you what it looks like. And then we're going to go ahead and do something with the route parameter. So let me go ahead and send back a 200 just for now. And let's go into Postman and let's go ahead and pass in literally anything. Let's pass in carrot. Now, if I look in the console, you're going to see that it says carrot. Okay, so whatever I pass in for this route parameter, it's going to go ahead and uh, get that value right over here. Request.params the item. Let's go ahead and pass in something else. Let's pass in something like uh, let's do uh, yogurt. Okay. You can see it logs there. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and actually do something with this route parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and do some object destructuring to get the item from the request.params object. And what we'll do is we'll pretend like our grocery list array is some database. And we'll go ahead and just search the array based off the item. So we'll do const grocery item equals grocery list dot find and then we'll just call we'll just pass in a predicate we'll call our uh, our parameter g for grocery and all we're going to do is just check to see if g dot item is equal to item so this will go through every single element in the array and return uh return the item if this condition is true Okay, so this will return serial if we pass in serial as the value for the route parameter. Okay, so let's go ahead and send back the grocery item. Now, if I go ahead and pass in milk, you can see it gives me milk. If I go ahead and pass in carrot, right now it gives us nothing back because carrot is not found. But in another episode, we'll talk a little bit more about status codes and how to handle whenever an item is not found in a database. I'll teach you about that later on. But let's go ahead and search for cereal and we get cereal. Let's try pop tarts. We get pop tarts. Okay. And you can also add more route parameters as well. Let's say, for example, if you have a more complicated application that takes in, uh, that has a route that needs multiple route parameters, you can also do it as well. Typically, this would happen if you have, let's say, some kind of sub value or sub, like some kind of nested object inside another object that needs to be also be referenced based off of some value you would need another route parameter to properly query the correct value so i'll give you an example now i'm going to go ahead and use discord as an example of when you might have an endpoint that requires uh, multiple uh, route route parameters so you can see right over here this endpoint is slash guilds and then we have a route parameter. You pass in the guild ID. So the guild is also known as a Discord server. Okay. And then after that, you have slash members. And then you have the second route parameter, which is the user's ID. Okay. Now let me explain to you why uh, they need two route parameters to get a single guild member. So if you're familiar with Discord, Discord is uh, Discord has something called guilds, which are just really Discord servers. Okay. So we first want to get the, the correct guild 
okay and the way that we get the correct guild is we make a get request we call this route and we pass in the guild id okay every single guild has an id okay now we're not actually trying to get the guild we're trying to get the guild member so how do we get the guild member well in order to get the guild member we actually need to know we actually need to know which guild that we're trying to get the guild member for right so if the member is inside let's say guild a we have to pass in guild a's id okay and then after they have this slash members path which just tells the end user that is calling this endpoint that this is the resource that you're retrieving right so you're retrieving all the members from this guild okay and you can then specify the user id that you're trying to retrieve from that server so hopefully that makes sense i know it might be a little bit confusing but again if you have any other additional questions i have a discord server you can go ahead and jump in and ask questions but i just wanted to use discord as a good example of when you might use multiple route parameters okay uh it's really common especially if you have a lot of relational data okay but that's gonna be pretty much it for this video so hopefully that explanation made sense that's gonna be pretty much it for this video uh and i'll see you all in the next episode peace out